Hello everyone. I have some time off today and I thought I'd use this opportunity to share with you a batch file I put together to batch install an entire collection of games onto a hard drive formatted for the PlayStation 2. So batch installers do exist for the PS2 hard drive, but from what I found, all the existing ones such as WinHip, HDL Dump and its variants, including Helper, GUI, they all had issues with a number of things, such as partition names, multi-disc games with names that are too long, conflicting with each other, dual layer disks not being installed correctly, sometimes games flat out just don't install at all, or users would have to add games manually one at a time to a job list. Let me show you a setup that I have currently so we're going to look at the outcome of one of my installations. So first I'll show you the table of contents. And any second now. So the table of contents shows the partition names, and you'll see here that every partition name starts with PP, followed by um, the game ID. HDL is uh, the short for HD loader. That's what uh, originally started everything, followed by the name of the uh, game. And here's the corresponding title for these partitions. So here you see Grow Lancer. That's actually two and three, but because only a certain number of characters are used, uh, that gets uh, dropped off. And here are the long names that are used for the titles. So um, I'll put a link in the description below for the batch file, as well as a, a post to discuss in more details the shortcomings of the existing methods and programs. Um, anyway, HDL Batch makes use of the latest version of HDL Dump, version 0.9.2. That's what I'm using here to show you the table of contents of an existing installation. Um, there are really just two very simple steps to HDL Batch. The first step is to run it to produce a scan log of the games that it found. And then the second step is to do the actual installation. And all this requires is a couple of mouse clicks and a few button pr key presses. So we'll start by right clicking on the batch file. We're going to select to run as an administrator. Notice that I've um, extracted the zip file and all the contents into the directory that contains all of my games. And they can be QBIN files or ISO files. You don't have to convert your CD files over to ISO. You can, but it's not necessary. So the first time we run this, we're going to be asked whether or not we want to make use of the game database that comes with it. And all this is, is it'll search each game file and it will extract the game's title from the database. You can optionally choose not to use it, and instead the file name of the game file will be used as the game title. And I'll show you both outcomes. So when we hit yes, you can see here you can compare the file names such as the second title here, it's God of War. Uh, the file name, however, has a game ID prefix and an abbreviated game title. Um, and all of these should have a proper game ID as well as um, the installation type. So it should be detected as either a DVD or a CD. And double check that the titles are what we want. So that's that first step. Just basically look at the log, make sure that all the IDs are there, the titles are what they, we want them to be. If you choose no, all that will do is instead of using the game title database, it will use the file name for the title of the game. And the title is what gets shown in programs like OpenPS2 Loader, or often known as OPL. Uh, so God of War 2 just uses God of War 2. Here G-O-W is the title because we strip out the game ID. Um, so that's what it would look like if you choose uh, no. 
Okay. Now, what do we do when we want to actually do the installation? So, right click on the batch file, go to edit, and we would change this little setting here, test equals yes to test equals no. Make sure that no is in all caps. Um, before I do that though, I do want to make one more comment. If say you have hundreds and hundreds of games then it may be that it's hard to look at the terminal output to check all the games have the proper IDs and titles what you can do is run a command prompt run it as administrator and what we'll do is we'll change directory to the directory that contains our batch file as well as all of our game files so the command to use is cd slash D which forces a drive change if it's necessary if you go back to the folder that contains all your games in your batch file right click and copy and then paste that by simply right clicking in the command prompt if you paste that into the terminal you can just uh, let's see looks like I pasted one too many times so right click once and then hit enter Okay, and there's our list of games and the batch file. So you can run the batch file and type greater than and info.txt. And what this does is it puts all of the output that normally sh shows up in the terminal screen into the text file. This uh, unfortunately also includes the prompt where it asks you to choose yes or no um, with respect to using the game uh, database. So I'm going to use yes, but I have to do this blindly. So after we hit enter, we don't see anything, but this is presumably where we would be prompted to type in Y or, or N. So I'll choose Y. And it doesn't look like it's doing anything, but if you look here, you see that info.txt shows up, and if we refresh, okay, I guess the, the file, it's not very large, but here we go back remember at the very end we have to press a key to finish up so notice that I'm returned back to the terminal here if we hit refresh again it looks like our text file gets updated so when you click in here you see everything that you would have seen in the terminal screen so this is for those of you who have extremely large library uh, of games uh, this is one way to uh, capture the output alright so that said let's go to step two so what is step two? Um, we right click and edit. We go down and we change this setting from test equals yes to no. Make sure to save. And then we rerun it again. So this time it will scan our drives and it will detect, hopefully detect one of our PlayStation hard drives. Now some of you may have many many different hard drives attached to your computer if you look down here there are only five options you can install it to HD 1, 2, or 3 where 0 is presumably where your operating system lives or you can do a network install or quit so if yours happens to be detected as for example HDD 6 what you can do is you can go back and edit the batch file and just change the first option here HDD 1 so here and here to whatever yours was detected as, so six as the hypothetical case. All right. Anyway, mine is connected by USB. It's detected as HDD1, so I'm going to select my target drive as one. So we'll press one. And here we are prompted with whether or not we want to use the uh, titles from the game ID text file. And I'm gonna choose yes again. So I'll hit Y and then it immediately starts the installation. So here you see the progress for God of War 2. This is a dual layer game that gets detected properly. Here's its title and it's detected as a DVD. Right now we're getting a rate of about 73 megabytes per second. So that's going to be dependent on the quality of your uh, USB adapter. You can get faster speeds if you connect directly to the motherboard but I didn't feel like taking apart my, uh, my 
chassis and hooking up my hard drive, so I'll just settle for 70 megabytes per second. I'll pick back up once this is done, because it's not going to um, be finished anytime soon. It'll probably take a few minutes. Um, if you've got a large library, it might take a few hours, but this is the extent of what you have to do in order to install your games. Just scan it once, look at the log, check everything's okay, then go back, edit the batch file, and then rerun it again. Choose your target drive, select yes or no for whether or not you want to use the game database for your titles, and then walk away. Hopefully by the time you get back, everything is installed and completed. And with that said, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video here for a bit, and I'll pick back up once this is all done. All right, I went and made some tea, got back, and this is the uh, finished screen. So everything shows up as 100%. We've got press a key to continue. Um, so when we press a key, of course, it closes out the uh, terminal window. Now, you're going to want to double check that everything did in fact install correctly. So, let's go back to that directory. And remember that our target drive was hdd1 colon. So, if you type toc hdd1 colon, you'll see that the game's were installed with these partition names, God of War 2, God of War, Xenosaga, Episode 3, Discs 1 and 2. Notice here, see how they have the same titles here, but they're different here in their game IDs, so this makes it so that there's no conflict at all. Uh, older versions of HDL dump um, don't insert this game ID, and, and so you end up getting cases where long game titles conflict with each other in the instance of multi-disc games. If we wanted to see the actual titles themselves, we can use HDL TOC, like so. And this is the title that gets shown when we view it from um, the game menu from, say, OPL, or Open PS2 Loader. Now, my last comment to make is something like Xenosaga Episode 3. You probably want to rearrange the title here anyway just so that you can see disc 1 and disc 2 a little bit earlier. And the reason why is because a lot of the OPL themes don't actually show, I don't know, however many long, uh, or however many characters this is. Sometimes they only show up to about here, so you would see Xenosaga Episode 3 twice on the game menu if you, you are using a theme that doesn't show the entire game title name. Um, so that's something that you'll have to be wary of. Um, if you go back and you edit the game ID, you can change that manually yourself and then keep this around so that if you should ever have to reinstall or install onto another drive, uh, then you don't have to go back and do that again. You can also edit it manually in OPL itself, but I find it much easier to just edit this uh, database and keep that uh, on hand for future installations. So I hope that, I hope that you found that uh, useful. Again, the main point of, of this was just to show you how simple the process is, and I hope that uh, this can be useful for you all. So thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys next video.